This here is a die grinder. It's basically a beefed up Dremel. You feed in compressed air, hit the lever, and it spins really fast. So the cheap Harbor Freight ones cost you about 10 or 15 bucks, barely anything at all. I got this one here from Home Depot. You know, obviously it's Husky, the in-house brand. And uh, I think I paid 45 for it. So a good deal more than the Harbor Freight one. Now, is this tool actually any better? I can't say. <laughs> I have not bought them both, torn them apart, and compared them, you know, guts out on the workbench. Um, but I would imagine that really they're both um, equally serviceable tools, at least for DIY home gamers. Uh, this is not a tool you need very often. It's just that when you need it, you need it. And I needed it for a project I was doing, so I just went and bought it at Home Depot. Um, it didn't make sense to drive out to Harbor Freight to try to save a few bucks. It would have been silly. Um, so I have this one. I'm pretty happy with it. The only thing that bothers me is it doesn't have a speed control. And at least I thought this is a problem with all die grinders. Um, if you've ever seen like a, an impact wrench, there's usually a dial in the back you can uh, turn to adjust the uh, like coarse amount of torque you're applying as you set in bolts. And I wish the die grinders had something like that. But as far as I knew, all you could do is adjust the pressure at the regulator or kind of feather the lever as you use the tool. <laughs> like that. And that's kind of finicky and futzy and a pain in the ass. Um, and after a few times of using this, I actually you know, got frustrated enough, I looked into it and found out that there is in fact a speed control built in to most die grinders. Um, I found a video from Chucky2009 He's a, a popular welder uh, on YouTube. I can include that in the uh, description below. And uh, he showed that in all of his grinders, there was a uh, screw you could turn to uh, the, adjust the amount that this valve here actuates. So in the lever, there's a little brass valve. When you hit that down, air flows, the tool chooches, right? More air, more chooch. So there's a screw you can turn, adjust it higher or lower, and change the maximum RPM of the tool. And this was on all of his die grinders, including the cheap Harbor Freight one. So I see that and I'm like, great. If that one has it, then my Husky has to have it. I must have just overlooked it because, you know, I paid three times more for this than for the Harbor Freight one. So I come down here, I look at my you know, die grinder, I'm like, okay, where is the thing? And I'm giving a look over and I can't find the adjustment screw for the life of me. And it hits me. <laughs> they might have just covered it with this rubber boot. You know, rubber, silicone, I, I don't know. Uh, but there's this, you know, kind of rubbery, soft uh, grip all around the tool, this overmolding. And um, the reason for that is both for, you know, grip to help you hold it while you're using the tool, and then also for insulation. Because um, as the compressed air exhausts from the tool, it gets cold and makes the tool get cold. You know, ideal gas law, uh, PV equals NRT, as the pressure on the left-hand side of the equation goes down, the temperature on the right-hand side also has to go down to keep the equation balanced. Um, air is not an ideal gas, so whatever. Anyway, it's why your uh, compressor tank gets hot when it fills up, and then why it gets cold as it uh, empties the air out into your tools. Um, makes these tools get cold as well, so they put a you know, insulating boot on top, which is a nice touch, really. But I had the thought that maybe they actually covered the adjustment screw with that and did not leave any sort of uh, access port. So I begin, you know, feeling it, looking for a soft spot, and then lo and behold, I find one on the back side here, directly opposite of the, uh, the valve. And I go start taking it apart, trying to get this boot off. Um, you know, getting a wrench underneath there and spraying in some rubbing alcohol um, to help, like, lubricate it. And, um, can't get it off, and then realize that's because they, uh, actually kind of molded it underneath the lever here with, like, the roll pin, you know, coming through it as well. So, like, to get this off, I have to pull off the lever and all that, then reinstall the roll pin afterwards, and that's more work than I want to go with. So, instead, I pulled out the hand slicer, you know, and just, uh, cut a little hole back in there. And lo and behold, there is a flathead screw. So if I can 
demonstrate. <laughs> so there you have it. They actually did have the RPM adjustment there. They just went and covered it with the, uh, you know, slick marketing on this piece of rubber. So I really hope whatever engineer did that did so, um, you know, under duress and, uh, you know, coercion from marketing and that no engineer would intentionally cover this thing up and reduce the utility of the tool. Right, so I'm just gonna clean this little hole up, make it a bit bigger, easier to get the uh, screwdriver in there. And uh, from here on out, I'll have a bit, you know, happier time using the grinder. And I hope you guys do too.